Well, I'll call the meeting to order and welcome everyone here tonight. If we could all stand and say Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, October 26th, regular meeting, here we go. Uh, I'm going to start off with administrator's report on agenda posting and notification of the meeting to the media. The agenda was posted at Three Lakes School, Sugar Camp School in the town of Sugar Camp. The town of Three Lakes, the town of Monaco, and the Demer Library via email. And then media notified via email included the Vilas County News Review, Northwoods River News, WRJ, O News, WXPR Radio, and WACD, WATK Radio. All right, thank you for that. Uh, next, amendments and approval agenda. Are there any amendments tonight? Not None? Since you've okay. Seen. All right, I'll seek a motion to approve tonight's mm -hmm. agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. All right, motion by Josh, second by Terry. Any other questions? Hearing none, call it to vote. All those in favor signify by stating aye. 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 Opposed? None heard. Motion passes 5 0. Next, we go to 2A, approving minutes of the September 21st, 2022 regular meeting. Someone would like to make a motion to approve the minutes. In the administrator's report in the minutes, it says that the sugar camp meeting was today and it should be yesterday. It says October 26th, but it should be the 25th. Good catch. Yes, first bullet point. All right, so we got one edit there. And are you ready to take a motion on that, Michelle? Yes, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Um, with the changes that with the changes you submitted. That started, yes. Okay. And Second. you agree to that? Second. Yep. Okay. All right. So motion by Michelle, second by Stacy. Any other further questions, comments? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by stating aye. 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 Opposed? None heard. Motion passes 5 0. Okay. Next, we have approving the vouchers slash check register for period of September 15th, 2022 through October 20th, 2022. I'll make the motion to approve checks dated September 15th, 2022 through October 20th. 2022 for accounts payable checks number 2223000013 through 2223000047 regular checks number 127017 through 127270 and manual checks number 5369 through 5385 in the amount of $852,426.43 and ACH payroll checks number 9000-38476 through 9000-38797, voided check 1707, and regular payroll checks number 59246 through 59249 in the amount of $454,225.39 for a total amount of $1,000,000. Three hundred six thousand six hundred fifty one dollars and eighty two cents. I'll second that. All right, so a motion by Josh, second by Terry. Anyone have any further questions? Hearing none, I'll call it to vote. All those in favor of the motion signify by stating aye. 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 Opposed? None heard. Motion passes five zero. Uh, public comments. Um, would anyone wish to comment regarding a, uh, an agenda item here tonight? All right, 
I guess we have no comments for tonight, and we will proceed on with the ministry's report. Starting off with the Three Lakes School District slash Demer Library Story Hour collaboration report. Yes, I just wanted to bring a little more information to you about um, a project that has been worked on between the um, district, Carrie Volk, Amy Johnson, our 4K teachers, and the Demer Library with um, Candice and Ann Asbeck. We started talking about it earlier this summer with the goal to really um, build an engagement and connection between the, the 4K classes as well as the community story um, hour in Sugar Camp and build that within our district, within our, in our buildings, while somehow trying to um, look at the themes and look at what we're doing to advance literacy. And a lot of work was done between the, the ladies, um, the teachers, and the librarians. And they went ahead and they came up with a plan for, for the whole year. And it's been going very well. In Three Lakes, the um, 4K program is separate. It's just the 4K kids attending because Demer continues to have the community program, I think it's on Tuesday mornings, where the community kids come in. And the 4K group in Three, in three Lakes is a, a rather large group. So we decided to keep it more simplistic and keep them separated. In Sugar Camp, the community group kids can join. There's only been um, one or two that have been joining at this point. We think it's probably going to continue to grow. But we're watching it for timing. We're watching to see how effective it is. And it's something that we want to keep developing. Uh, we've made a plan. And what we're going to do is we're calling it our pilot year. And we're going to look at the attendance overall. We're looking at... Um, the interests that parents express, what they like, what we can do to, to build our collaboration. And then we're going to look at our data and see if it's beneficial to both the library and the community and the school district, and we'll evaluate it at the end. So I thought you might hear a little bit about it, potentially, because they've talked about it, I think, at the town level. Um, the program hasn't been in place since 1995, and nothing has been adjusted since then. So we decided it was really an appropriate time to do so. And again, it's one of those things that if we can continue to build our connections in many ways with our young parents and our community, that's what we want to do. So far, it's going very well. <coughs> yeah. Um, wasn't that long ago that we received some kind of award from the state with the collaboration between the school and the in the library in that program, so uh, it's got some legs. It's so. growing bigger and better. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Well, thank you for that update on that. Uh, next, we have the National Rural Education Association Conference Recap. Okay. Um, the National Conference for Rural Education was held in Green Bay last week. Um, I'm, I'm glad I got to attend. Um, you shouldn't compare conferences, but I've got to say, the WASB conference is it's still by far the, the best of the conferences that I ever attend. This was a national conference. It was really good to be participating in it on, on several facets. Um, seeing that Wisconsin is very, very active, our northern group of Wisconsin is very active in the Wisconsin Rural Schools Alliance. Um, Facts and figures that became very clear is across the country, you know, about 80% of the school districts are rural. And we only hear about the urban, the big urban, when you hear about the political machine and, and how things are, are um, sometimes determined. And I think there's finally a more of a clout and emphasis behind the scenes where the smaller school districts are saying, you know, we've got to talk, work together across state lines so we do have a voice that's heard because often it is um, major decisions seem to be influenced by the votes and the votes are the bigger voices of the urban areas and um, it just feels like there's some some real momentum going um, in Wisconsin you know 75 percent a little bit more of our school districts are rural and when we looked at the data, it's very much heavily, uh, this conference was heavily focused on research. So it wasn't just a lot of, well, feel good. There was a lot of data behind it, which I appreciated. And, you know, what it came down to is even during the pandemic and things that kind of stopped the nation, the rural schools and the rural communities, they figured it out. And they continued how to provide education, a good education, and they did it with limited resources, as they always do. 
And there seems to be a little bit of a shift saying, all right, others, look at what is happening in some of these other districts. You could learn from them. So to me, that was really kind of inspiring and exciting because people are willing to tell their stories. Um, we would like to share our stories, get a bit bigger of a voice out there. Um, some very good speakers. A couple of things that also stood out to me were they kept talking about it's not a matter of the dying rural town. You know, sometimes you, you, you get these stories that are kind of skewed. It is a decline in birth rate. It's a, de a change in how um, populations live. And they also said research-wise the biggest impact on why rural school districts have difficulty comes down to housing. And that just kind of reemphasizes everything we're hearing in our own community because people are able to work more remotely. They found that they can take their careers, but if they can't find housing, that's the problem. And what these studies also showed was uh, multi-generational families are staying in their homes. People, as they get older, they're not leaving their homes. Or if they, one of their, um, like if a grandpa and grandma, one passes, the grandmother maybe stays there and a grandchild comes in. And I started thinking about in our own district, you know, how some of the grandkids have moved back in and they've bought their grandparents' home and, and that's a nationwide problem. Made some great connections with a couple of um, school districts, one, one in Texas and one in Virginia. Um, did a lot of listening to their early childhood programming and what they're trying to do. Um, very good information, but I think we can again be proud of what's happening in, in our little consortium here in the northern part of the state. Uh, we've, got, we've got the right emphasis and early education for 4K and early childhood is really rising to the top of what needs to be looked at to start building you know, your, your um, longevity with districts. So I appreciated that I got to go. Um, it was worth the time. I always say, oh, is it worth the time you know, to, to leave the district? But it was worth the time. It was not political in any way, which was a pleasure. I thought maybe it would be very much about the political scene. And none of the sessions focused on that. It was about the education of the child and how we meet those needs with limited resources. So that, that was really kind of refreshing because I was kind of apprehensive mm -hmm. when you start bringing different states together that it might become something else, but that was not the case. So this was a national conference, but it was held in Green Bay? Yes. Interesting. Exactly. Huh? Um, and this um, organization has been around since 1907, one of the long, longest established education associations. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Well, very good. Yeah. Always good to see what others are doing and, and in the same time kind of compare and learn, right? Absolutely. Brought back some good ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> All right, on the new business, November meeting date, 11-16-2022 at Sugar Camp. That will be a, one of our um, two meetings that we hold in Sugar Camp. And I just want to remind the board that we'll also do our tour of the school facilities at that time. And that will be at the end of the meeting then, right? Yes. Okay. That can be at the end. All right. Very good. Uh, next we go on to reviewing the third Friday count. Okay. Um, Caleb has this prepared for you. It looks just a little bit different than last year because he wanted to use the same software, you know, that he works within um, for reporting to the state. But it's pretty close to what we had predicted um, last month when we told you what we were looking at our numbers. I asked him if there's anything particular that I should share with you, and he said, uh, yes, he said our count is actually up a few students from last year. Um, remember that we actually get funding based on a three-year rolling average, even if that's not showing there. Your total enrollment number is your resident students with your open enrolled out and your open enrolled in, as well as our RVA students. So that's sitting at 519. And our membership, which is not the same number, is because um, early childhood is at one child is considered 0.5, and our 4K students are considered 0.6 students instead of a full student, which is, in my opinion, 
completely counterintuitive because littler people need more people resources <laughs> and energy and bodies. And, uh, but that's across the state. There's a, there's a real uh, move. I, I think uh, Carrie Fultz shared some information with me today um, that there seems to be a little bit of traction going now that perhaps we will be able to see in the budget should it come to be and pass in the 20, um, the upcoming budget with the state that they will fund full K-4 day. That's yet to come, but it, it's closer than it's ever been. Mm -hmm. And that is something that uh, our superintendent group and our um, small PAC group that has been working with the legislators have really been pushing. You know, we've been trying to hone it down to a couple of things that we can say would really make an impact. And that's number one, if we could get some funding with our 4K and then, again, working on getting higher funding for our special education reimbursements. Mm -hmm. Did you have any specific questions on this document? In referring to the 4K, what is the percentage of uh, students that are full-time? That are, that are staying full day? Yeah. I think, what do we have going home? I think there to? are six who are going home currently in Three Lakes. And at the quarter, two of them are going to increase to all day. And all of them in sugar camp stay all day. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right, so anybody have any questions? We're set to go. All right, well, thank you for that review. Uh, next, consider approval of substitute paraprofessional wage increase. Terry. Okay. Um, I had been looking at our substitute um, pay, and it was at $13.49 an hour. And to get subs for our paraprofessionals is very difficult anyways. And I did some checking around, and we were considerably lower than most of the other districts. Um, so I'm proposing that we increase that to 1450 an hour. That would put us very closely in line with um, Northland Pines, with um, Rhinelander School District. Um, some of the other areas are a little bit higher than that, but it, it's going to address the sub pool that they're not losing money should they have a job come our way if they would want to take our job that would make it a little bit more appealing. So, and looking at that in comparison to our um, actual full-time or, you know, employees, um, it's not, it's lower than what they're making, but it's still, we got to pay for their gas and their time and make sure it's worth their coming in. Okay. So I would like the board to consider increasing the um, substitute paraprofessional rate to $14.50 per hour. All right. So we heard Terry's recommendation. Would someone be prepared to make a motion? I'll make a motion to increase the substitute paraprofessional rate of pay to fourteen fifty per hour. Second. All right. Motion by Stacy. Second by Michelle. Any further questions? Terry, is that sort of what you want, or I mean? Is, you, is that enough? I think it's fair. I think it's right in the ballpark where we should be right now. Um, I do believe that when we come up with looking at um, uh, contract time, I'm going to look at everything across the board again and see our, our substitute pay rate versus our employee pay rate and do some comparisons with local districts to make sure that we are within the ballpark. But I feel right now that that is the appropriate amount. Okay. All right, any other further questions? All right, I'll call it to a vote. All those in favor of the motion signify by stating aye. 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 Opposed? None heard. Motion passes 5 0. All right, thank you for that, Terry. Mm -hmm. And next, we go to consider approval of personnel report of new hires and resignations. Okay. <clears throat> For our personnel report, we have hirings this month. Katie Botnick as our library media specialist. Marcus Leepcher is boys basketball assistant coach. Michelle Brown, girls basketball head coach. Lauren Swinski, girls basketball program assistant. 
Jack Wales, Junior High Boys Basketball A Team Coach, Kara Miller, Junior High Boys Basketball B Team Coach, Rich Jabinkowski, Junior High Girls Basketball A Team Coach, William Crump, Junior High Girls Basketball B Team Coach, Seth Center, Head Wrestling Coach, John Fink, Assistant Wrestling Coach, Jennifer Meyer, Drama Advisor, Jennifer Crum, Drama Assistant Advisor, Heather Hermanson, Forensics Advisor, and Bethany Puffer, Band Advisor. All right, so that's our personal report. Someone prepared to make a motion to prove that. So moved. Second. All right, motion by Terry, second by Stacy. Does anyone have any questions? I just have a question. I saw wrestling on there, the wrestling coaches on there. I know last year there was a little bit of confusion in regards to junior high wrestling. Are, is that still coming? Is there an open position? Is that? Let's ask Charlie where we're at with that. Still have an open position. Okay. All right. It's I been, just, okay. I've been out there for a year now. Okay. Nope. I understand. I just wanted to make sure that mm -hmm. something was addressed there. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any further questions? All right, I'll call this motion to a vote. All those in favor of the personnel report signify by stating aye. 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 Opposed? None heard. All right. Okay, next. Um, consider approval of snowplow bids. Okay, we, we put out for bids for snow plowing. We had a long a contract, but um, our provider uh, last year, I don't know if you recall, but um, through the hardware store, he had passed away. And um, uh, the person who's put in the bid here, Brian, he had picked up and continued that. Now we felt we had to get um, this back out there, so we put it out for bids. We only have the one that BK um, Seasonal Services put out, you know, uh, an answer to our request for bids and you're seeing in front of you what was given. Um, this is for a three-year bid at a locked-in price um, looking at $345 per time for the plowing of the area indicated and then written within there too uh, there's the on-call basis with six dollars per minute um, and he has noted that it would probably be about 15 minutes for an on-call service for snow drifts, et cetera. Um, we just also happened, um, just for your knowledge, um, a call was made to Justin, just saying our town crew you know, does the back here and that is still on the docket and they're going to be um, observant of keeping open what they can for us too, which we greatly appreciate that service that they provide to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I do not anticipate <laughs> other bids coming in. I. This is it in front of you. Okay, and, and there was a closure date on this. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Yeah. October seventeenth. There we go. That's correct. Okay. All right, so we've opened the bid, and is someone willing to make an approval to accept that bid? I'll make a motion to accept the proposal from BK Seasonal Services as presented. Second. All right, motion by Josh, second by Michelle. Does anybody have any further questions? Hearing none, we'll call to vote. All those in favor signify by stating aye. 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 Opposed? None heard. Motion passes 5 0. All right. Next, we go to consider approval of budget revisions and set the tax levy for the 2022 through 2023 school year. All right, Caleb gave this to me, <laughs> so I said to make it really simple, which he has done. Um, as you can see in the packet he provided you, the change from our um, projections at the annual meeting were very little. He was very, I would say, spot on with our attendance numbers. 
Um, looking at the previous levy, it was at $8,248,019. The new Fund 10 levy is at $8,247,867. The change is $152. And um, the previous mill rate was at four seventy nine. dollars and after the October 14th certification, it changed our mill rate to $4.61 with a change of 0.18. So he's also included in the packet for you to take a look at um, where those changes came in the property value change. And then in um, the lines added together, it was the state computer aid um, was reduced by $49, and the exempt personal property aid was re reduced by 103 which is the makeup of the $152 change that you see right there. And then he's attached the same um, budget adoption worksheet that you saw at the annual meeting reflecting the change in the, the local tax source to the $8,247,867. I'd like to make a motion to approve the budget revisions as presented. Second. All right, so we have a motion on the first part of that consideration. Does anybody have any questions on the budget revisions? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by stating aye. 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 Opposed? None heard. Motion passes 5-0. Uh, now for the second half of that consideration setting a tax levy for the 2022 through 2023 school year. Okay, and so the recommendation would be to make a motion to approve the 2022-2023 tax levy for $8,467,867. So moved. Second. All right, motion by Terry, second by Stacy. Does anybody have any further questions? All right, all those in favor of the motion signify by stating aye. 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 Opposed? None heard. Motion passes 5 0. And uh, thanks to Kayla for all the good work. And uh, yeah, we can move forward with that. And that's the last of our previous referendums mm -hmm. monies. So, all right. Next, we go to consideration of the WIA soccer conference realignment. Okay, um, Charlie and Justin have brought forward uh, the request to consider moving to a different conference. Uh, specifically because it would give us more um, a more of an opportunity to participate with schools that are closer to our enrollment size. Um, Charlie has provided a letter and I'm going to let you go ahead and speak to that Charlie so you can give the, the more meat of the details. Um, I guess if you guys have read the letter already you'll see that our conference when I first started here is kind of dissolved. Um, which leads us to finding a lot of games on our own. Um, I think this year is like 17 or 18 games um, that we had to go out and find from kind of and contract and things like that. Well, unfortunately, there aren't many schools our size in our area that have soccer. Um, at one point in time, Coach Wales and Coach Bolton Bolt Bolt approached me about maybe looking into uh, approaching the GNC. Um, with much larger schools to see if we could join theirs. So we do play a lot of their schools already, but not all. Um, and then we started looking into it a little bit more, and then we said, well, how about if we play in the Central Wisconsin Conference? Um, it has schools more our size. We play a number of these schools already. Um, you know, I think, you know, like this year we played Amherst, Columbus Catholic, Bullard Gresham, um, and Northland Luther. So of the seven schools or eight schools that are in that uh, conference, we play a lot of them already. So um, I say, hey, that's kind of a good idea. Um, they're a lot smaller. 
schools. Um, they're not, you know, a Rhinelander, they're not a Lakeland. Um, so I took it amongst myself to contact the conference commissioner <coughs> and had some conversations with him. And he said, hey, you know, that's not a bad idea. We have two schools at our conference right now that do not have soccer. Um, they weren't able to field teams this year. It might, it might work. So um, he kind of told me maybe how to, you know, make the letter up um, if we weren't able to get into it this next year. And maybe we could do it the following year. Um, our conference was Bayfield, Ironwood, Phillips, and um, ourselves. And Bayfield, Washburn left our conference two years ago to go to a conference uh, to the west. Ironwood hasn't had a team now this year. They did have one last year, but they only had 11 players. And Phillips hasn't had one now in four years. Um, they went from a state contender, a state playoff team, to not having soccer the following year. Mm -hmm. So, um, kind of left us kind of hanging out there. So, there's no guarantee that they will accept us, but I'm just asking for your permission <coughs> to approach them with this. Um, I have contacted the WIAA, and specifically uh, LeVar Ridgeway, who's in charge of soccer. And since we're really not affecting other teams in our conference, he said that we could probably do this through the fast track system, which is a lot quicker. Could take place as early as next year, if these schools agree to have us. <laughs> now, there's no guarantee that they're going to say, yeah, we'd love to have you in the conference because they're going to have to travel to us too. So um, I told Jeff that um, if need be, I'd be happy to come down to their next um, conference athletic directors meeting, tell them about our case, um, and uh, see what we can do. Regardless, we're traveling a lot for soccer as it is. <laughs> um, this year we had Houghton come down and play us, their club team. I mean, it's kind of a mutual respect that you come down here, we'll go up there. Ashland this year, Bayfield, Washburn, we're always on a road trip up there. Um, Columbus Catholic down in Marshfield, we played down there this year. So Amherst, we played down there, they're part of this conference. So, I mean, no matter what we do, we're traveling a long ways. Um, it's a it's a joy for the parents and our coaches and players when we play at Northland Pines because <laughs> it's kind of most of a home game. It's about as close as it can get. So um, I guess with your permission, I'd I'd like to approach this conference. They're more like us. They're smaller schools, and uh, hopefully it would give us a little bit of longevity in a conference. And, and right now, you know, this year, for instance. I'm doing academic all conference. I have nowhere to send it for our soccer kids, so we make the awards here at the school. Um, Lisa does them off a template that we've created. I'm able to give them an academic all conference or certificate, and you know, for doing not only being an athlete but doing well in the in the, in the classroom. Uh, but as far as like all conference or hanging a banner, unfortunately, we can't do that right now. I guess with your permission, I'd like to move forward with this. Very good. Um, I guess we could start with some questions. Does anybody have those? Well, I, what do the current soccer coaches think of as a late for? Their support. Okay. Yeah. I, I wouldn't bring it to you if I, I didn't have their support. Okay. Is this boys only or will it? None of these schools have girls soccer. Okay. Um, some of them have girls playing on the boys team, and that's the way they do that. So that was kind of a, hey, can we do this for both? Unfortunately, this is, we're still going to be in the same boat for our girls. For the girls. Okay. However, girls, um, Phillips had a team, but I didn't, you know, so we still have, and Bayfield Washburn, but again, they're not in our conference. Right. So. Okay. As far as, I mean, was there discussion to, I mean, I realize like Rhinelander and Pines, and I mean, I know they're bigger schools, might get beat up on a little bit more during season, but, uh, you know, there is, they're considerably closer. 
right? Was there some discussion as far as thoughts of trying to go that route? Um, we did, but then also you throw Medford in there, um, Mosinee. Mm -hmm. So you're still still putting some miles on the bus no matter what you do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah, it, it, it's it, it could be a possibility, Josh, but I guess in the long run for the longevity of our program, if we're looking at sustaining this, we're far better off competing with schools our size. I mean, I mean, it'd be like, hey, let's for girls basketball, let's let's get in the GNC too because you know there's only, there's only five schools in our in our conference that have girls basketball now. It just it wouldn't be the right thing to do for our athletes. That I feel anyway. Yeah, I understand. It's a, it's a double edged sword. Yeah, I know. mean, we still I can still schedule them non conference, mm -hmm. and I probably will because they're here sure. close. Mm -hmm. I sure. mean, uh, but rather than doing two games with Lakeland, I'll probably do one. Sure. Um, rather than doing two against Northern Pines, I'll probably do one. Um, you know, this year we did not play Rhinelander. Um, uh, just just didn't work out that we did. But mm -hmm. you know, I'll probably put them on the schedule for one next year as well. But so we'll still get that upper level competition that we've been able to, you know, be at. Um, but. Uh, I can't say soccer wise that we'll be able to stay at this ability. Sure. You know. And I guess I'm kinda of looking out for what's gonna happen in mm -hmm. three to four years as well, or two years. What's the overall trend of our youth leagues in the You know, it seems to be fairly good. Um, I don't know, Josh, you might know more youth soccer in mature camp. You know, that whole <clears throat> early teens group is has been thin ever since they were young yeah. um, but as far as the young kids there's a lot of yeah. there's a lot of athletes coming okay. both, three, both three legs sure ball. camp I mean it's it's all through the board I mean you look at the softball numbers are triple what they've been baseball numbers okay. um, I'm working on basketball right now sure camp has 19 kids between second and third grade that want to play well, I mean, numbers are numbers are up. So if we can keep enrollments up, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. If we can keep things competitive, if we can keep kids having fun, yeah. I think uh, things are on an upward trend. Great. I mean, yeah. I just just to talk. You know, numbers are up, and I know it's it's something for them to do in the fall. And, and, and I know for our kids, our, my kids all played soccer, but and they really didn't have the intentions to play in high school once they got. So I think there's a lot of kids that are involved because it's something for them to do after baseball or softball is over. And I guess as a but, parent, I was looking to keep my kid active. Yeah, but the more you get, the more you have involved, the more the chance more you have to, to, to yeah, or to grow on them right now. Yeah, want them engage. Yeah. And I think Three Lakes had fairly good numbers. Three Lakes had really good numbers I also. They said we're seeing yeah. 140, was it? Or is that both of them, both the programs combined? For what? For two soccer. Uh, Some reason 140 rings a bell. It, yeah, I mean, from from 4K soccer through U14, that that could be. Yeah, I think that was what. John I think there was two, three, were there there two, three leagues, three leagues teams, or at U12. One. Yeah. Was one. Yeah. And I think they come together for U14, right? Uh, so they did. They, they did yeah. this year, yeah. But prior to Couple that, they had. Couple U10s, yeah. So. so. All right, so we got them coming up the ranks, so we got to figure a conference for them. So, uh, any other further questions? Someone prepared to make a motion to approve uh, the letter of submission. I'll make a motion to move ahead with um, looking for a conference for the boys' soccer, as presented by Charlie. Second. Second. All right, so motion by Stacy, second by Michelle. Any further questions? Hearing none, we'll call it to vote. All those in favor signify by stating aye. 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 Opposed? None heard. Motion passes 5 0. All right, thank you for all the work that's been put into this. Yeah, we're about to take it to the next step now. Yeah. Very good. Next, we go to consider approval of the 2023 through 2028 long range plan district goals. We are looking ahead, aren't we? 
we are, and we're working hard on that. Uh, you did get uh, quite an extensive review of it last month with um, feedback and suggestions for revisions, which <clears throat> I kind of incorporated as we were going through the meeting. So this is the finalized copy. Uh, the, the addition that I want to note for us uh, here is we had added within our positive school culture, we had added objective number five, consider the physical environment to enhance health and safety of all. So that was added from the last uh, revision. We talked about that last week and I, or last month, and then I'm bringing it back to you for you to take a look at this. Did you want me to go through each of the um, the goals again, or do you feel that you know them quite well? I know we've talked about them quite a bit, rather than just passing them through. But I certainly don't want to rush things through if there's questions by any board members about what we're doing and why. Any suggestions, anyone? I guess I'm, I'm good with not going through it, but yeah. I'm good. Terry? No, fine. Yeah, Michelle? I'm okay with not going okay, through it. Okay, so I guess we can, we can do the summary here. And if okay. you, uh, uh, was there anything else in addition that you wanted to go through? Uh, no, not here because we will give more into the specifics when we look at the annual goals. Okay. That's the next step. So mm -hmm. I would um, ask the board to consider making a motion to give final approval to the long-range plan for 2023 through 2028. Um, on page 6, okay. Ryan Bach's name is spelled correctly. I don't know if that's a huge <laughs> deal. <laughs> yes, it was to Ryan. I can correct that. Thank you, Michelle, for mm -hmm. seeing that. Yep, got it. I tried to put more specific names and to people so as we develop the accountability here too. I like the format. I think it's very well laid out. Well, oh, thank you. We're going to keep this document alive. <laughs> yeah. It won't be just a shelf warmer. <laughs> and as you stated, it's a living document. Yes. Each year we'll review it mm -hmm. and, uh, and there could be changes. So, all right. Um, is someone willing to propose a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the long range plan draft as presented. Second. All right, so motion by Josh, second by Stacy. Anybody have any further questions? I'll call to vote. All those in favor signify by stating aye. 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 Opposed? None heard. Motion <coughs> passes 5 0. All right. And thanks to everyone involved that started with the participation right from the community survey all the way through to today. So, uh, next, now we get to take a peek at part of this year. Right. Considering approval of the 2022 through 2023 annual goal. And uh, this is our focus for this year. Again, I just want to stress that um, our approach is that all of these things are being worked on to some degree, but it's really important to identify where most of your efforts are going to be going in, otherwise it gets kind of lost. So um, if you look at the annual um, goal sheet, I've highlighted the goals underneath teaching and learning, positive school culture, and community connections that will be our primary focus. Again, that doesn't mean these other things aren't being worked on, but we've already begun some pretty um, heavy lifting in these areas. So under teaching and learning, um, there's five goals. Objective, or there's five objectives, I should say, under goal one. The goal is uh, students and staff will become expert learners. And this we've begun shaping already last year already when we were looking at the universal design for learning, realizing that expert learners means not only our students, but us as a professional staff who are teaching our students to become those expert learners. So we have to invest in ourselves. So objective one is something that we've already put a lot of work into this past um, summer and this school year, and we're continuing to move that way. Um, if you want to take a quick peek ahead, if you look at then on our action plan, 
Objective one, provide professional learning opportunities for educational staff. I have that highlighted because that one is where we're really focusing. If you look at some of the action steps, these are things that are already in place or we've begun to put underway. So the educational staff will participate in professional learning opportunities and best instructional practices. Professional development coursework is aligned to the district event identified areas of needs. And um, this is something that I've been trying to work with our principals and they've done a great job since I've come here. Um, we've been very streamlined in what we're improving for um, extra credit, or I shouldn't say credit, but professional development emphasis to earn additional accreditation and such. If it doesn't match what we're trying to do, then there's really not a solid purpose for it. And staff has become very good at realizing that what they're doing to build themselves professionally should also be building the district plan. Um, so th that's something we're working on and then bringing those needs to our staff through instructional coaching. Uh, we've had that in place since we hired Amy Johnson. The first year was basically to get things up and running with our literacy program. Last year she started doing instructional coaching and she's got a wider um, range scope emphasis on that this year too. Um, the thing is, like with anything, you have to have a safe environment to work with a coach and be able to take a risk and even fail. And that is a big part of this, that if we're trying to grow and stretch ourselves, we have to be able to feel like, okay, we can try it, and if it doesn't work the best, we will come back. The great thing about kids is they come back every day, and they're very forgiving if you goof up, <laughs> you know. They're like, all right, we'll give it another shot. Um, so this is in place, and we've got actual coaching rotations where she's meeting with, with teachers, and they're having those in-depth conversations about their practices, how they can improve, and how it's impacting instruction. And this is one of those areas that truly makes a difference in achievement. So we've got it moving the right direction there. We identified areas where we wanted to train last year already. This was one benefit of um, some of the uh, federal funding monies that came. They were um, supposed to be really tied to uh, providing uh, intervention services or instructional services that may have been because of learning loss, well, we can always improve with our literacy. And we wanted to have an approach across the district, not just being a kindergarten or first grade um, type of program. So we asked our staff last year during the summer to um, do one of these two programs. The top 10 tools which is much more for regular education it's professional development with online modules, and then Amy and Carrie and others have been working with the teachers, having additional meetings, and we're talking about our practice, and um, many have already completed it, and then that continues through this year, so we did some heavy front-loaded um, instruction. And then Keys to Literacy, that's our special ed component and they also have been doing this work and they had to get it done this summer and they did, bless their hearts, they got it done so we could be diving right into readiness when our kids came in because we knew we had a transitional year with Mr. Phelps leaving and a new teacher coming in and really looking at our data and wanting to be you know, aware of what the best environments are for our kids and, and be ready. So we've been working on that, and that is going well. I listed some of the people who are also involved with that um, on the right-hand column. Uh, Co-teaching has begun. That's, that's really learning how to be like a special ed teacher and a regular ed teacher, and you plan and discuss together. The beauty of that is all of a sudden kids lose labels and everybody's learning and you pick up from your peers or from another teacher and it but it takes you know <coughs> intensive and intentional work mm -hmm. so that has started this year so that's pretty um, exciting we have that going um, part of that too is learning uh, about the inclusive learning communities for special education staff what is most appropriate when um, God always got to keep the kids in mind. Some kids might do really well for the most part in a regular education classroom and others need to have other options. It shouldn't be one size fits all. It really needs to be 
read the signs, read what's in front of you, understand what the needs are, and make those professional decisions. And that might not stick forever. That mm -hmm. has to ebb and flow, depending on the situation. Yeah. But you have to learn how to recognize that. And I think Carrie and her team have been doing a really good job with, with helping all of the teachers understand because, you know, it's easy to get lost in what is special ed world, what is regular education world. Well, they're all educating, and, and that's where some of those walls are coming down. We participated in the Professional Development Day on October 10th. I would say it was, um, it was I felt very successful, mostly because it was bringing people together from the area and I really like that our paraprofessionals were given the opportunity to have some professional development mm. and make connections with others. Um, school districts uh, personnel could talk to each other, you know, like your um, physics teacher who maybe is a, a lone wolf in a district could talk to others. And I think there were some good um, relationships established there. It was energizing. We're looking at it taking place next year. At that same time, it'll be October 9th, um, I'll talk to the administration team and, and get their input, um, and it will be hosted by Northland Pines next year. So those are things that are happening right now, and it fits so nice and sweetly into a little column, but the volumes of work that is attached to this year is really driving our professional development plan. So any questions on that objective? No. I think a lot of it is moving already. Oh, it's, it's moving. <laughs> you ask the principals maybe too fast some days. Because, <laughs> see, they get to have the tough conversations about, like, Ooh, the growing pains. <laughs> All right, then let's look at our positive school culture action plan. Um, this is something that you would think would just be natural and intuitive, but it's not. It's something we really want to work um, hard on growing our common Three Lakes School District Blue Jay culture. Looking at objective number one, um, this is a lot, this is more of getting into the, the, the soft skills, <clears throat> the feelings. I think what came out in our original um, planning day is we heard concerns at that long range planning meeting. We wanted to identify the strengths and concerns about why people are feeling, you know, either part of the community or not part of the community. And this is one that even though it's established, it's very beginning stages. So the administrative team and my cabinet team who make up are made up by the same people and a few extras, we're gonna really start trying to identify what we heard and then look at how we can start to grow that. We have to lay out kind of a groundwork of where we want to get to rather than, well, it seems like it feels like we have to get some identifiables there. So that's going to take a um, bit of time and focus. And then probably the, the more meaty of the objectives then would be number three, increase, increasing the school spirit and pride through student and staff involvement. That'll come out of the um, team talking about it, bringing it back to staff getting staff input so we can start at the school levels and then grow from there. Underneath that we have, I have listed review the current participation of students and staff in activities to form a data baseline. I'm really curious to know who has been involved in what, um, who we see attending games, who we see as um, doing workers or volunteering. I'm not talking just staff, I'm talking community, parents, um, students, and get a good feel for that. And then I thought it'd be real timely if we could look at our um, fall and winter homecoming participation, the activities and the involvements. Um, I listened to Justin share. You ask the students, they'll tell you. They give pretty good feedback about what they want or what they don't want, and that also helps shape where we go with this. And then um, I think we have to get to a point where we're identifying some primary leaders um, and I'll, I'll tell you where this comes from, and, and I will own this one. We shouldn't come up on the 4th of July parade and feel like, well, who's in charge of it? And there's an assumption, well, it must be Charlie because Charlie drives the truck, okay? That's not solid evidence-based practice. 
we have to be able to look at ourselves as a district and we're saying, okay, when the 4th of July parade comes up, we know this is what's going to happen, this is who is responsible, and get more communication. It comes back to communication every time as to inviting the youth groups. Who is inviting the youth groups? How is that going to look? It's not fair to go, hey, Ryan Bach, are you going to be that one? He stepped up and volunteered, yes, but I want to have a very consistent plan. I don't like wondering what's going on when I should feel like I should be the one who knows. Mm -hmm. So that's something we're going to put a lot of emphasis on and um, start laying that out. I think that will make communication better. I think it will make the school vibe, the school spirit, the community spirit stronger, and we will all have a better peace of mind with that one. So in a nutshell, that's kind of where the start of the, the culture is going to be focused on this year. Do you have any specific questions on that? I'm here. Mm -hmm. And see, that's one that, had we not had the long-range planning meeting, I wouldn't have thought of that in our long-range plan. So to me, that was a very important um, event that we took part in. Okay, and then communication. So our commu innovative, well, I should change that. That is a, that's a fix that should say community connections there under the action plan. Um, objective one, review and refresh school-related communication procedures. Jen is always working on this. She and I talk a lot about this. Um, but we've also come to hear that, you know, it's the things that you don't, that somebody misses the message that it sticks with you and that, that really gets to you because you try to make sure everybody is given the information and a timely source. So <coughs> what I want to do with Jen is look at our current procedures, but then we need to sit down and I need to talk with Charlie and Justin and Steve and Todd and everybody about, okay, for this situation, what should the communication protocol be? We do think we know it most of the time, but there's things that fall through the cracks. We, I, I learned today, thanks to Justin showing me, that we have some opportunities within programming that we have here that we can allow our, our parents to know, to sign up for if there's a change in the schedule. If they fill out the account, three easy clicks, they're going to be notified if there's a change in, in a schedule. Um, does a little bit of work on our end, but we're going to look at that so we can increase that communication. For me, it's not because... I don't like getting yelled at on the other end of the phone because I don't. And people are really nice even when they yell around here. They're very pleasant about it. They're quite kind and say, you know, I really wish I wouldn't have missed the game, but I didn't know. But I would rather have that energy focused into great communication, them knowing if something changes in a timely fashion because their worlds are affected too whether it's transportation, pickup of kids, a change in daycare, an adjustment in a work schedule, and that's something that we're always going to strive to do better. I, I just think that those protocols, if we can get those put into place, will be important. Um, and then uh, I'd like to worry, make kind of a workflow, like the, if this happens, then that happens. I know Jen has a lot of this up here and maybe already does have it formulated, but I think if we can get that into black and white, it will definitely, it'll help me. And um, then, you know, I kind of lost my train of thought there. I was going to add one more thing. Oh, I know what it is. Looking at scheduling. I really want us to focus this year, and this is going to be, a, a, again, more of a heavy lift on, on Charlie and um, with Justin's assistant that we want to nail down, down those dates when it's going to be a meeting for, like, fall sports participation. I really want to get that in a calendar format and out many weeks before. Just because we know many people know when it usually is, we can't assume that everybody does. And again, I'd rather put the energy in up front and have it very clear than having it, you know, is it coming or isn't it coming. Those are the kind of things I think that we can um, start working on now. Um, I'm not by any means saying things are bad. I don't like that word. And I think if anything, 
the communication has been so much better than I ever remember it in the past when it's a while ago when I had kids in school but I just think we can always do better and that's mm -hmm. what I kind of have pledged to the few parents I've talked to that we're doing our best but we can do better and that's where we're going to put our emphasis yeah. so like that. proactive that's the three areas that we're going to focus on on this annual plan another again a living document I plan to come back in a few months tell you where things are at as far as updates come and maybe give you an indication as to where some of the shifts are starting to take place you know now we're probably going to be looking at this um, this one here was highlighted mm -hmm. in the beginning okay did you want to did you mean to include that one or not do I not I did mean to include that. You did? Yep, I okay. did. Um, skipping back to teaching and learning, I missed number five. And that is to continue to advance the partnership opportunities by growing uh, connections with local businesses. Um, the reason why this has to be in this year's goals is because Ryan has already uh, done considerable work on this. And we have some really exciting things happening at the um, high school level. Um, there is a group of people listed there under the third bullet. They have joined a community or a career readiness community of practice where they're meeting with other schools across the states. It's a DPI program. And um, they're giving an hour and a half a month of their time. And they're collaborating. And these teachers, Ryan, um, Sarah, Steve, Mark um, Busco, and Luke Stotts and David Ditzler are part of this. And then they're coming together. They're learning from each other. They're sharing best practices. And they're also having the opportunity to make some connections with um, people that maybe we don't have as much exposure to, like if it's a, a bigger manufacturing situation or things of that nature. There's more chance the network and, and broaden our offerings through this DPI program, which we were the only district in the uh, northern part of the state that was accepted. So I feel like this is a real shining star that we're going to be highlighting. So thank Very you good. for catching that one. All right. So if you don't have other questions, then I would ask you to consider approving our annual goals for this year. I'll make a motion to approve the annual goals for 2022-2023 as presented. Second. All right, so motion by Stacy, second by Michelle. Does anyone have any further questions? Hearing none, I'll call to vote. All those in favor of the motion signify by stating aye. 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 Opposed? None heard. All right. Well, well done. And uh, yeah, just uh, appreciate all the work and that everybody will be putting in on this. So but, uh, as, as we always want to do, we just want to keep improving, right? That's exactly right. Next, we have the Veterans Day program schedule slash update. Okay, the program is going to look very much like uh, last year. Um, Justin, can I ask you to give us the times? Sure. 10-15 uh, uh, is when the Legion has confirmed they would like to start the program here uh, for everyone um, K through, I don't know if everybody, everybody pre-K, but K, K through <laughs> 12. Uh, we'll be in the auditorium starting at 10 15. Um, we will feed them lunch, uh, a lunch afterwards, after the ceremony here. Uh, and like Terry said, we'll do a, a, an all school, not, not two separate ones here, all one big one. And then what is the timing for sugar? 1 30 on sugar. Thank you. That's November 11th. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. All right. Looking forward to that. Thank you. Next, we have the Washington, D.C. class trip spring 2023 update. Yes. yes. Justin's going to talk again. This is this <laughs> has been on our mind, believe it or not. It's not like it was forgotten. So. No, and I can't forget it because most no. mornings when I have my Cheerios in the morning, the <laughs> class trip. 
class of 24, class president. So, um, the, the, uh, we do have, it, this is happy news, and it, it has been most of the summer uh, on and off communications with the travel agency that we work with um, to get things narrowed down, and of course, working with Charlie and, and, and the schedules. And, and that's a tricky part of doing this as a high school trip mm. uh, rather than an eighth grade trip. True. Because now you have all sorts of high school activities to work around. Um, yeah. and, but at any rate, uh, and, and, and then of course the, the travel agent has some challenges on their end too to, to get things booked. It's not as easy as it used to be. Uh, anyway, long story short, we've got dates confirmed, airline tickets booked, uh, tour buses, everything's uh, good to go. Uh, March 31st to April 3rd of 2023. By my count, there's only one event in our end that's going to be scheduled, and that's a Sunday evening academic awards program. We'll have to get moved, but we'll take care of that. That'll be an easy move. It's not. It's 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 one of the clearest windows we have. That's not going to walk on. Uh, there may be some practices walked on, but it's not going to walk on any events um, or games during that period of time. So, fingers crossed. That's the trip, of course, that was uh, planned to be taken by the eighth grade way back in 2020. And now we're finally going to get to go again, fingers crossed, knock on wood, it's, it's booked and, and ready to roll. So, um, good news, good news. Um, of course, we expect this. When we book a trip at a 2020 price, we're going to be paying a little bit more for a 2022 trip price. That's to be expected. But, um, again, the uh, class president says that we're good. We got lots of money in the bank. They've done a nice job fundraising since the trip fundraising was done. So um, they're in pretty good shape. And, and, and I'm guessing that as a district, we would help them out if, if they need a little bit of assistance. But I, I was actually, when I, when I saw the, the, the quote now compared to the quote then, I was expecting it to be worse, hmm. given the price of everything since 2020 to now. So, um, so that's good news. Got it booked. And it's confirmed all, all taken care of, all, all airlines are. <laughs> We can, that's exactly why I bring it up here in public. So yes, you can put on the calendar, um, and we're, we're all systems go. And, and so far that we know of, and, and, and this may change a bit as we get the firm dates out there. So far, I've only heard from one chaperone who was going to go in 2020 that can't go now. So that's okay. so far so good there. Great. So. Thank you for all the work on that, Justin. <laughs> Probably years, or that's a are we good question. That, that that's that <laughs> remains to be seen. That's okay. we're in conversations about that. I don't have a I don't have a solid answer for you at this point. You know, okay. We've been we've been trying to figure things out in that regard. You were saying you add a little money here, take away a little there. Isn't there a, <clears throat> a plan that we approved as the board? Yes. A yes. couple of years ago Absolutely. as to how to do this. Yep. 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 Okay. Yeah. But it, what, what that plan didn't account for is the price increase from when the fundraising dollars and the district dollars were set for that. So we have... But the uh, percentage should yeah, yeah, be Absolutely, the yeah, yeah, to, to, to do a 50%. So... Yeah, you got it. Okay. Yep, that's still in place, you bet. Good point. All right, well... Thank you for doing all the work twice. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it definitely is a great program and great trip. So very good. Next we go to the School Forest Camp 3 update report. All right, so I, I have some, uh, a bit of a report for the front end and the back end of the property. Uh, I'll start with the back end. On the 28th, I believe it was, of September, uh, had, had a gathering out there, a meeting of uh, a number of uh, individuals assembled, mostly by, uh, with John Grossman's help. Um, we had historic, uh, Three Lakes Historical Society representation there. We had a retired history teacher there. We had a uh, Lac de Flambeau tribal elder there. We had a Waswaganing, which is Lac de Flambeau tribal historian there. Uh, to take a look at that tree, the, the, the marker tree, the mystery tree in the back. Oh. Um, the, the assessment there uh, was still maybe. Uh, the, the, the direction of the tree and the way it's pointing certainly checks out, uh, given the Native American camps that, we, that, that, that they knew of and they could verify uh, in relation to the maple syrup gathering spot that's over by the, uh, where now the tel uh, radio tower is. Um, Coincidentally enough, uh, Jeff Smith's property 
is inclusive on where the maple syrup gathering place was there. And when we went there, uh, initially the, 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 the initial reaction was, well, this tree is a little small for what we would expect it to be if it was around at the time where it would have been used for a marker tree. However, they know that the tree, the maple stand that's in, in, in the property over by the Smiths were the maple trees that were being tapped and it's fairly similar in size. So, hmm. long story short, uh, another visit uh, tomorrow, uh, John Grossman has ex assembled a whole bunch of tree experts and they're gonna do some incremental boring oh. to figure out the age of that tree yeah. versus the age of the trees over by the, so, so maybe we'll have a little bit tighter of an answer, but that's, that's in the back half, that, that, that's the update there. Uh, still a question mark mystery tree. Um, in the front end, pr probably a little bit more pertinent to, to, to our uh, mission and goals out there. Uh, Terry and I did get a, a, an email update with a whole list of questions from Phil uh, just yesterday. She and I haven't even had a chance to sit down and, and, and come up with some, some answers. Uh, but the, 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 the tone of the question was questions were very uh, good, like uh, the permitting process must be coming along well mm -hmm. because it's about ready to uh, take the next step and that's you know asking about bids and if we're going to bid certain parts of the project out and uh, timelines for completions and things like that. So yay uh, on that regard. So. Terry and I have some work to do to figure out our, our uh, answers in terms of what, what Phil's asking us, um, but that should be done here in the next couple of days. Uh, so, so good, good, good stuff there. It's, it's coming along well. I, 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 you're always worried for that email. Ooh, we have a problem. Mm -hmm. That wasn't the case. It was some, okay. some, some more specific things about um, getting the project going yeah. uh, with, the, with the parking lot and stuff up front. So that's what I know. We heard from the DNR yet? Pardon? Have we heard from the DNR yet? Not the official word, no. We no. Need to be pushed. You should ask that lady. Can I call me? Yeah. You got hey, on another note. <laughs> <laughs> not, not in this, not in that part of the DNR, but. I was going to say, she, she did <laughs> confirm that they are still working from home. Yeah. And uh, much of the time, which mm -hmm. is not boding well for many things. Mm -hmm. The other day, I did see a vehicle parked there with state license plate, so that's got to be a good sign, right? Yeah, I, good sign. I did as there. well. That little white car? Yep. 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 <laughs> I thought the same yeah, thing. Like, All right. Nice progress. <laughs> All right. Very good. Well, thank you for the update. Yep. All right. Next, we go to district related mm -hmm. positive happenings. It's third for today, I guess. A uh, number of field trips going on at the elementary here. Uh, pumpkin patch for 4K and K in the last couple of weeks. Uh, we have fifth grade go to Honey Rock and do some outdoor activities. Fourth grade's been at the Cranberry Marsh. Um, pretty busy and active. Um, student council is up and running in Three Lakes. Very uh, nice decorations in the hallways. All our bulletin boards are Halloween themed at the moment. And um, Todd will probably touch on the Red Ribbon Week, but we have that going on right now. Dress up days and, and some lessons to accompany that about uh, drug and alcohol awareness, um, culminating Friday with a uh, combination of Halloween and, and our culminating activities for the week. So, busy. Yeah, so our Red Ribbon Week, they came, or Channel 12 came over on Monday and interviewed uh, two students, and then this is Opal. They did a nice job representing the school. A um, couple movie stars posing for the camera. <laughs> 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 so, uh, yeah, so they, they enjoyed having them there for most of the most of the morning. So, and then we also had Healthy Kids Walk, which was I think two Fridays ago that we did over at the park, and that was really nice too. So, I got some. Um, first one is from Mr. Bach. Uh, he apologizes he could not be here tonight. Um, but he had really positive things to say about the uh, rejuvenation and we're back on track with the heavy metal tour. Uh, so uh, all of our eighth grade students uh, got a tour of Paterski Brothers, of Charter Next Generation, uh, of AeroPro, and then ended up with a lunch at Nicolet um, in that constant journey of career to college readiness, just getting kids thinking about things in the neighborhood. So um, that was a, a, a positive happening for sure. Um, Monday night, uh, we had our fall junior high high school music uh, concert and the amount of positive feedback I heard on people coming out of the auditorium was uh, 
really super. Mm -hmm. uh, like numbers were up. Uh, from my perspective, by no means am I a music aficionado, but it was entertaining as heck. <laughs> and uh, it really looked like the kids were having fun, mm -hmm. both in band and in chorus. And that's mm -hmm. uh, hats yeah. off to the, the, the advisors, the, the, the teachers working with the kids, because it was it was really a good product. Of, of, a much improved product in terms of numbers of kids participating, and that's beautiful. It's more work to be done, but certainly the direction we uh, like to see things going. Um, also had a meeting uh, just last week with an instructor from Nicolet who is laying the groundwork to request or uh, looking to for, for potential, and we've certainly opened the door to explore more about this. Uh, putting a course into our course description book for next, next go around for uh, possible inclusion for the next fall of uh, one semester EMT basic course uh, transcripted credit sort of dual enrollment to be hosted here on site uh, for our high school kids uh, oh. went really well and, and, and the, the curriculum just started to put my nose into it looks really really solid um, so ha happy to have those talks and of course before we do that we'll bring it to you with a proposal if, if it's something that we take the next step with but it's looking really good like that that is going to work out into our uh, as an elective uh, for our course offerings. Um, uh, drama this weekend, uh, the uh, our drama department, uh, junior high high school, is going to present bedtime stories as told by dad, uh, if you're available, seven on Friday, seven on Saturday, and a matinee at one o'clock on Sunday. Go and watch. Uh, the kids have been working really hard on it. We're going to see a little uh, rehearsal on Friday afternoon. The elementary and junior high are going to go and watch. So that's what I got. Very good. Um, I guess the mural, if you haven't seen it, turned out really well. Um, it's something that's taken some time um, through design and efforts um, through our coaches association and most namely, most namely Andy Weiss, who pretty much took it under his wing to design it once again. Um, looks really nice, but if you're a former graduate or a coach of Three Lakes, be on there. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot to look at there. Yeah, there really is. <laughs> so fun stuff. Very good. Any others any others? I've got one. Um Mike, you were there for this when we went to the regional WASB um meeting. This just, I think, applies to the district as a whole. Um, the school, the parents, the community, the kids. Um, WASB really came out and was, in a roundabout way, complementing the rural schools, kind of tagging off of what you were saying, that, and came out and said, the rural schools need to be paid more attention to with what they're doing, with what they have. Um, we were the ones that stayed up and running during COVID. We found a way to make it work, keep these kids learning. Um, the way we have to work with harder with our budgets. Um, in fact, the one quote was, we need to start, WASB said, um, we need to start telling these urban schools that they might need to start paying more attention to what the rural schools are doing. Um, so I think that, and while, you know, pretty much all of us there were rural schools, but um, I really hope that they mean what they were saying there and that they're going to pay more attention and, and uh, really look at and use us as examples for moving forward. So. Great. Very good. One thing I forgot to mention, I'm sorry, um, that... And, and, and this becomes really apparent as you travel around the, 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 the neighborhood for uh, sporting events in all different places and, and, and it happens to be their homecoming there. And, and, and it brings me right back to our homecoming. I've talked to our kids about this, I've talked to our staff about this in faculty meeting, and so I would love to share it with you as well. But um, homecoming is a lot of work sometimes for adults. Um, and, and I'll admit, as a principal, sometimes it's, it's a miserable week. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I gotta say the kids and the adults here are fantastic with it like um, I, I challenge you to find a place where the town doesn't look trashed during the homecoming mm -hmm. week seriously mm -hmm. like our kids have fun 
they do, and 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 and, and they they organize things well. We let, let the kids do a lot of it, um, but it's it's so super cool to have a homecoming and not have to do three weeks of cleanup in in, in public places and private places. Um, two thumbs up to our kids for that. Uh, love it, love it, love it. Knock on wood a little bit, but love it. <laughs> yeah, good point. One, one thing to add on to Justin's from homecoming, we did have the uh, forward bank touchdown toss. Uh, we just, we, unfortunately, we just received a check for two hundred fifty dollars, not five hundred dollars, but it has been deposited into an account where we can make useful for many things. Yeah. So. Yeah. Good turnout too. Yeah. Yeah. That actually, they said that was their largest turnout that they had had at any event. Wow. And they would like to come here and do a half court shot as well yeah. this winter. So, cool. awesome. yeah, so excellent. We're gonna get that on the docket. Very good. Lots of positive stuff. <clears throat> Any others? We'll then move on to the WASB correspondence. Okay, I just received a reminder from Al Betry today from CESA 9 that on Thursday, November 10th, there is going to be a lawmakers advocacy workshop, and that would begin at 6 p.m., um, and the program runs from 6.30 to 8.30, and dinner would be provided as well. So if you have, um, you probably have seen some information, but if you have more interest, Please feel free to let me or Carrie know, and we could help get you registered for that. What are the dates? It's on November 10th at Tomahawk, CESA 9. And that's it for the correspondence. Um, I do have something to add on that. Uh, okay. At the Region 2 uh, meeting in Manaqua, um, we did vote um, on a new representative. Uh, Terry had been a representative for how many years? Ten. Ten years. Yeah. I still you am. You termed out, right? I still am, actually. <laughs> until January. Until, until January. Yeah. Right. Right. Yep. Uh, <coughs> but Executive Director of the WACB, John Ashley, gave uh, Terry a nice tribute for all of his work and effort and, uh, and, and said that... Um, there has been a lot of things that have taken place at the state level focusing on the rural schools and a lot of that we have to thank Terry for mm -hmm. and uh, and I thought that was a nice tribute uh, that he gave you and uh, so I wanted to pass that on and, and let you know that uh, you were honored greatly so well I was excited working with the WASB I enjoyed it. I chose to sort of to get on the money side of things. But uh, I want to say thank you to you, the board, for supporting me and giving me the, the freedom and flex flexibility to, you know, participate and to do that. It takes a lot of extra time. It's, oh, I meet, you know, we meet uh, like six or seven times a, a year. It's normally in Madison. Um, so it takes a lot of extra time to, to work on it. But you guys, thank you for giving me the support. Absolutely, yeah. The time commitment, no doubt. And I know you've gone out to Washington, D.C. and such. And, oh, yes. Uh, so, yeah, uh, thank you. You're welcome. All right, next. It's an easy one. Motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Motion by Terry, second by Josh. All those in favor signify by stating aye. 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 Opposed? I guess we all want to leave. Motion <laughs> passes 5-0. Thank you all for joining us tonight and look forward to seeing you in Sugar Camp. <laughs>